Okay, this is getting started with Blender.org and normal maps per pixel shaders. Um, this is version 0 0.5.5. Uh, it's finally stable after a year of off and on development. Um, it's uh, been developed in collaboration with the Real Extend project, a uh, open source ogre-based uh, 3D game engine and it's been sponsored by Minotech so special thanks to Tommy Holstrom at, at Minotech this uh, model I'm demoing with is by Daniel uh, Ordillo he's got some nice normal maps here that uh, we're gonna load into Real Extend Tundra 2 Tundra 2 point um, 1.2 this this button will uh, open up uh, Tundra for you you have to have set your pass uh, before if you, down here if, if you follow the readme exactly and installed things where it recommends you, these paths are already pointing to the right places um, if you have your own custom um, materials and your own custom shader programs you'll, you'll need to set these directories here but uh, so far we, it's been tested with Tundra and um, should probably start start there it's, it's, uh, it's definitely a good viewer and uh, it's uh, it's very very fast so okay so we, well, we don't see anything up here you have to hit the S key to zoom out a little bit and um, let's let's go ahead and just add a new object here. And um, let's give it a material. And um, to lo to load it, you just uh, press the same button. There's no lights um, yet. There's 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 a light in my scene, but I forgot to select it, so I'll just select all, and then preview again. It's not going to uh, update the mesh data on things that you've already sent so it's pretty safe to just select all and, and keep uh, updating and adding things that way. Um, so if you if you want to update the material you can simply uh, just just like that and and then again update. So the, the first thing we can see here is uh, well, our, our, um, on our skull, that the, uh, the normal map is being used as a color map. It's not actually affecting the normals. That's because this material is directly as it, as it was when, uh, from the file. It hasn't, it hasn't been configured yet for, um, to use the per pixel shader. We have to specify that in Blender. This, by the way, is the org texture texture panel that uh, really gives you all the options that you're really going to be concerned about with with uh, Ogre. And uh, down here, these are the Image Magic um, post processing. Uh, can be useful if you're using high resolution textures and you automatically want to resize them down by half or quantize the colors quantize the colors if your output is ping or gif this can save you um, maybe half half your uh, file size um, so setting up um, per pixel shaders is you can do it actually from from this inter this interface here the standard material uh, panel or you actually do it from the nodes interface. There's sort of a duplicate interface here. You see org material layers and org material layers. It doesn't really matter where. When you when you click on that it's going to create this large uh, shader tree here which uh, is just storing the data for us. We don't need to interact directly with this. You can um, click on these to select the, the material pass. See these material passes one 
one through uh, eight, and then we have the base pass here. Um, so for per pixel, you're going to assign the shader on a pa a pass one or, or higher. You can't do it on the base pass. Um, so click here, and then watch uh, watch over here. You're going to see that it's going to set up that extended material for us. This enables this button enables um, the per pixel shaders, and then this is the selector of the shader. And um, if you get a warning here, that means the parser was unable to uh, uh, figure everything out that it needed to to be able to use this shader. But we're not going to use this uh, this shader anyways. We're going to use the the Rex um, diffuse normal uh, and we can see here that it's brought up two texture units um, there's base map and there's normal map and we can just plug in our, uh, our textures there we don't need to specify a UV channel but we could if we needed to and uh, let's go ahead and update Alright, so let's let's um, let's see how we can combine per pixel shaders with a fixed pipeline um, materials. So on pass two, I'll create another layer and enable fi fixed pipeline, and let's let's tint it uh, let's tint it red. And the blend, we want to, uh, let's say, let's do an add on top. This is going to add on top of the previous layer where we have the per pixel shader here. The normal, normal map uh, is here. And then on top is, we're going to add this color. So let's, let's see if that works there. Um, what else could we do here? Is, um, you could assign te uh, textures at this level as well. Um, let's take a look at uh, Guru options. So the Z offset that's important. It it will for each new layer. It's going to bump this number up by two. We shouldn't really need to change that. But if if you do get some flickering. Let's zoom in here. Let's see if we can get. See, I get a little bit of flickering there when I zoom in really far. There, that's the Z buffer fighting with itself. You could uh, increase this number uh, to to eliminate that. Um, if we want to optimize um, this rendering and make uh, make this render faster. We can disable uh, fixed pipeline, and um, this is on the base pass. I, I disabled the fixed pipeline, and uh, turn on the Guru options on the base pass, and disable color right. So on on these uh, on these other passes, it's doing a. Um, we don't even need to actually do a depth right here. Um, it's doing a depth check here. And um, we're optimizing the rendering speed because on the base pass, we're not drawing any color. We're just writing into the Z buffer, the depth buffer. That way, when Ogre then renders the pass one, or the second, second layer, it um, it won't have to do these per pixel calculations on pixels that are occluded by if this monkey was in front uh, or partially occluded this skull the the pixels that are occluded um, 
don't have to be updated. So I'd say uh, I saw that in the org documentation that that's, that's a common uh, configuration. Is your base pass is doesn't write any color; it only writes to the depth buffer, and then your your following layers are then optimized. Let's uh, let's test out the um, the physics. Let's set up some physics here. I'll set up this uh, this plane here. And uh, if we bring up the <coughs> this this toolbar here, um, the first thing we can do is enable collision on the plane. It's going to default to box. Uh, well, we could set it to uh, we could set it to triangle, triangle collision, and um, we won't enable physics on this. We don't want this uh, this plane to to fall. And then uh, I'm going to add a um, I'll add a uh, sphere here. And uh, on the sphere, I'll put um, enable collision, and we'll change it to uh, sphere collision. And uh, let me add a, uh, I'll add a cube. Let's uh, enable collision on that. It defaults to cube collision. It's fine. One more uh, <coughs> monkey head here. This time I'm going to set the collision type to um, this is triangle mesh and this is uh, convex convex hull. The uh, the rule is with um, Tundra's implementa uh, implementation or usage of, of bullet physics is that. If it's triangle mesh, it's static. It's not going to move anywhere. If it's, um, it has to be convex or one of these primitive types to be able to and uh, to move around with physics. So, I also give this um, a, a rigid body, and uh, the mass of one is fine. Yeah, all of that's fine. Also, this. Yeah, I will enable rigid body, and on the sphere rigid body. And, uh, let's see. And, uh, should also give these some uh, colors. Okay, so I'll just select all, and um, let's let's reload that. Okay, so the, the physics is paused, so that's what that's what these controls are all about here. This play play button is gonna will start the physics. Let, let's go ahead and play play the physics. And we can see it; those objects fell on on the ground. You can see here the the, the physics uh, debug um, wireframe shows us this convex hull does not uh, exactly hug the the real mesh. So it's that's that's the price you pay when you get performance with convex hull. Um, but uh, well, other. 
otherwise you can't uh, have a moving object, a dynamic object, it, if, it, if it is triangle mesh. But what, you, what you'll usually do with uh, the background is, um, is have background static environment is triangle mesh.